this is the fourth week of our Advent season and the fifth week of the message series that is called It's a Wonderful Life. A journey through questions and looking at some of the issues that go to help us understand something about gratitude and gratitude for the blessings that God's given us. These last couple of days have been just beautiful days and beautiful opportunities for us to experience something of the beauty of our summer season. But they tell me, don't hold your breath because it's going to change this week. <laughs> but we have so many things that we can be grateful for, so many things that we can give thanks for. During this message series, I've been reminding people that there are a couple of things that we can really give thanks for and really say appreciate. The first is simply the gifts of every day. There are so many things that are good for us every day, so many things that help us every day to appreciate God in our world. We started using the, um, the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And it was a reminder in that story that this man, George Bailey, had so many wonderful things going for him and then one thing went wrong and it all fell apart. Now, I know a couple of people have seen the movie. Who's actually seen the movie? A few people. Tonight you have a chance to watch it. It's on Gem at 8.30. So then I won't have to tell you the answer. You can actually find what happens when Joy ba George Bailey gets his mojo back. So that's what it's about. But George, in the midst of his story, lost sight of all the blessings had re he'd received in his life. And because he'd lost sight of the blessings, he went into the fits of despair. And then, through Clarence, the class A angel who hadn't got his wings yet, he suddenly found what it meant to be blessed. And there's a little thing in there, and I was telling the story before Mass, that... Um, uh, Every time a bell rings, um, the belief is that another angel has just got his wings. And every time we, there's amongst the priests, there's a, a priest who's a popular priest in the diocese who unfortunately has to do a lot of funerals. And at one stage, he just said, ka-ching. So now every time somebody checks in somebody, we all say, oh, he's got another funeral. <laughs> the little things of just the blessings of life and the reminder of the good things of life, the fun things of life, can help us have a totally different appreciation of what's going on around us. But the other thing that's important in that story is to recognise that it's not what is the gift, but it's the giver. And that really is the purpose of this message series, for us to appreciate the greatness of God who gives us so much every day but we have to open our eyes to see it. Because we can wander through every day and miss the incredible gifts, the blessings we receive because we're not looking. And so that's the invitation all through this series has been to look, to find God present in the everyday moments of our life and to give thanks for that. And that's the third of the steps we suggested was to actually practice gratitude. Practice saying thank you to people. Practice witnessing to people your gratitude. And today's gospel reading is a most beautiful expression of that. Just imagine you're Mary. Some of the guys, you might find that hard, but just imagine you're Mary and you've just been told that you are to be the mother of the Saviour that God is going to come into your life in an incredibly powerful and wonderful way and he is going to bring peace to the earth. What would you do? After being stunned and perhaps sitting there for a few minutes trying to work out what this mean for you, meant, meant for you, I'm pretty certain you wouldn't have then got up, travelled a great distance with great difficulty to go and see your cousin. It doesn't matter that Elizabeth is an older woman who's never given birth and who in her old age 
is now being given this opportunity to, to bring forth life. I don't think it would have been your first thought to go and see somebody else. But that's exactly what Mary did. Mary left her own place, her own safety, and went to visit Elizabeth. Now we've heard in previous passages in the Old Testament where older people have given birth to a child, but they've hidden themselves from the congregation, the people, because of a sense of shame. Why has this happened to me so late in life? Why am I now being treated differently? We know that's what Sarah, the wife of Abraham, did. She wasn't able to go out into the community. She was conscious of what had happened, but she was aware that she was now very different from what everybody else was doing. So Elizabeth probably was very quiet in her own house, not going out into the community. And so, so when Mary went to see her, she was coming to bring help, the help that she needed to give, prepare for the birth of her child. But not only did Mary do something, as soon as Mary arrived, we heard that Elizabeth responded and responded quite powerfully. We heard how she said, um, that why am I being honoured to be blessed by the visit of the mother of my Saviour? Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And Elizabeth was so overwhelmed by the presence of Mary that something changed for her. She was expressing gratitude in a very powerful and wonderful way. In ways that we now use in our prayer the Hail Mary is filled with the words of Elizabeth as she says, blessed are, you, is, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. We pray that regularly because like Elizabeth, we are giving thanks for what God has done to Mary and what God has done for us. So the story of our journey is to recognise that we are called to lead or to introduce people to experience the presence of God just as Mary came to visit Elizabeth and both Elizabeth and John the Baptist still a child in the womb responded to the presence of Mary there was a very real sense of this is how God is touching our lives this is how God is helping us to know his presence in our midst there are people in our story who were the ones who introduced us to Jesus, to God. Our parents, most likely. For others, it could have been a grandparent. For others, it could have been a teacher or a mentor. Someone introduced us to Jesus. Today, I'd like you to think about expressing a word of thanks in your prayer and in your thoughts for that person. To recognise that they did something quite spectacular, probably without really thinking, of making God's presence real for you. And the second thing I'm in asking you to do, and in the midst of this COVID situation, and we don't know what it will be like next weekend when we continue our COVID journey, what would it be like if you were able to encourage or even consider inviting someone to join you for Mass at Christmas time? As I said, we don't know what COVID's going to allow us to do. We don't know what kind of restrictions we might be placed on us. But that shouldn't stop us at least reaching out to people. And like Mary going to Elizabeth, like Andrew at the beginning of the gospel where he went and said to Peter, we have found the Messiah, come and see. Frequently somebody needs to invite in order for a response to be made. Because we're not a people who come to church for our own satisfaction. We are called to be disciples, being a witness to others, and leading them to Christ. So I'd like to pray that this week, even if it doesn't happen that they come, 
that you might consider somebody that you would invite, somebody that you would reach out to, and invite them to come to Mass at Christmas time. It's a moment when we're called to give thanks for what God has given us. And we always know that the best way to express our thanks is to give a gift to somebody else. And that might be the gift of welcome and invitation because that truly can make a difference.